Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. Let's play camera on for just for a second. Welcome to another live session here at Genesis Models. We are in the 28th live session, and we are in the middle of building the um, A4M Skyhawk, which, if you remember last week, um, we only had the fuselage half together. We've done filling, sanding, a bit of scribing, um, and really, I was hoping to sort of like find some fit issues and show you guys some fit issues, but you know, I've literally just been doing what I've already taught you, which is just gluing these bits together and it's gone together rather, rather lovely. A few things to show you still, but a um, very good fit indeed. So, um, really good by Hobby Boss in that one. Um, so, we're going to be jumping in, doing a couple more little things to this just to kind of um get get over a couple of a uh, few problems that it does have but um just to let you guys know um next saturday going to be walking up snowden now this is like a charity walk and everything um if you haven't seen it you know uh, on jensen models webs website um there's a nice little link where if you want to donate to uh, tourette's action um tourette's action you can if you like and basically I'll just walk up um, snowden and you know you just um you know basically give a, a good charitable donation to a good cause um if you're into that sort of thing um if you was listening last week i did say there was two surprises which i did do a inbox review of this pre-release inbox view of the Supermarine Spitfire FR Mark 14. And then this was a pre-release inbox review, which basically means you can't buy this yet. So it's quite cool to get this from the manufacturer. Um, so go check that out if you are interested in it. Um, I do believe it's going to be out very, very soon. Um, um, as I mentioned in the um, inbox review, it was something like, I know Wonderland models say um, pre-release of 3rd of June and the FX website says May. It just says May, no date, but yeah, very soon to be out quite cool. You might want to check that out. We started the Tempest as well and um, I've got an episode of the Star Trek video, so that's coming along. Um, now, I did mention that there is two surprises. Um, that was the first one. The next one should be in the post now, and when I get it, I'll show you, and it is rather, rather cool. Quite a big one um, to do. It's sort of up there with HMS Victory, kind of big style almost. Um, so hopefully um, you'll um, look forward to that, so just stay tuned on that sense. So let's jump in to our Skyhawk. Right, I'm just playing cameraman for a bit, sorry, um, but here we go. Here's a Skyhawk. Um, as you can see, the fit has gone rather, rather well um, indeed. Now, the one thing is, is when you sort of put these things together, you might have little sort of gaps and stuff. Um, you might be able to sort of notice as gluing the wing section to the fuselage. I mean, you might see these little gaps just in there. Now with these kind of gaps, they don't have to be seamless. We don't have to go off like we did here, fill it, sand it to a perfect seamless finish and then rescribe and everything. Um, things like this, right, we can use. Um, I absolutely love this and I really recommend everyone to get it. Plastic Putty by um, Vallejo. It's got a great applicator. I mean, you can use pretty much any filler, really. It's just the applicator of this is just so, so good. Um, the way we go about it is, you know, we've got this. Maybe let's bring you in because it is a little bit of a gap, right? Um, just here, a little bit of a gap. And what we do is we've got this nice applicator. Just inject that in there, right? And we could... Um, probably just go all the way along with this actually um, then getting out a cotton wool bud and I like to lick it just to make it a bit moist right and I'm actually I've actually kind of almost pinched it I don't know if you can see that I've just sort of like pinched it with my teeth so it kind of goes a bit pointy because this is a quite a bit of a 90 degree angle and we want to get in there so while the plastic put is still wet I'm just dragging this along, 
right and what this is doing is just pushing it right into that gap right um, but because of the applicator because we're cleaning it up before it actually dries hopefully you're sort of seeing that we're getting quite a nice neat fill which means we don't have to go off get out the sanding sticks or even to go out and get um, the scribers out and, and all that cool kind of stuff so it's just nice and simple I mean that is basically it that's just uh, filled it in you can see where it's white where you know the problem areas was because it's filled in there you can see where it's sort of blank where okay the problem areas wasn't so much so it hasn't had to fill anything in um, I know like you may get a little bit in some of the recessed panel lines right but to be fair it is quite easy just to come in say with a pea cutter and not even a pea cutter actually I mean just a pin voice just to like scrape out any bits that have maybe got into areas you don't want it but um, all in all that looks quite good remember to always put your lid on i know a lot of people do complain how oh it just dries up and it goes all horrible and stuff um plain and simply as soon as you finish using it i should have put it on quicker actually but as soon as you finish using it get the lid on and these they, they do really do last you've just got to remember make sure your nibs clean get your lid on straight away don't give a chance to dry up and, and they do they do last if you take good care of them in that sense uh, i just want to get um cotton wool but because i can see just down here there's a little bit of it in one of these recessed panel lines just to if you rub at it enough you will eventually get it all out right the only thing is with this is i mean okay once it's dried you might come back to it in 10 minutes and you might notice and i'm sort of just seeing that maybe um, you might see some air bubbles come out um not hard at all to sort out that come in with a second application right where the bubble is wipe it up boom done and it is such a good effect as you can see this was a little bit crap as you can see this join line along there but i've basically done the same thing along there in fact there's an air bubble right there might be a bit hard to see um just sort of show you just you know we've already put an application on this so it's just you know target that air bubble a little bit of a blob there again with the cotton wool bird all right and there we go all nice and sorted so you know that really is um, a good technique um, to have under your belt um, as always you know we've got the comment section you know comment down below um, anything you want saying hello any questions and answers you want doing what you're working on um, you know anything you want to want to ask um it looks like um we've got someone who's already gone off and bought some of the Val uh, vallejo filler so um nice one on that i'm sure you will love it um next up we have um air brakes just here these air brakes um now this is kind of like the pain because if you want air brakes open right absolutely fine right as you can see absolutely fine i'll uh, go on there nicely but if you want to close them up um you know you've got all sorts of potential problems right i mean it's not necessarily gonna look like the rest of the model it's not going to look like all the rest of the recessed panel lines and recessed rivets on here which is all nice and flush and everything um, as you can see i'm trying to put this in and um, i could push this side down get it nice and flush but then it's just sticking out just there um, you try and glue it down and 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, you've got all sorts of steps going on. Um, these kind of things are a little bit of a pain. You have got to put a bit of work into them if you wanted to make it all look nice and flush to have all your panel lines looking like the rest of the panel lines on the model. Because when we glue this, um, the glue lines aren't going to be as perfect as the rest of the panel line. So, uh, as I say, we've got to put a bit of work into it. Now, this does fit not so bad it's like a hairline a little bit too big so in situations situations like this right what i want to do is just sand it very sort of lightly right nice and lightly let's not go mad right because with these it's sort of like you could just sand a little bit and it just pops in absolutely perfect. You sand just that little bit too much and then ooh, that's it. You've just gone too far and uh, that's it. Now you're going to have like big gaps. Although that's not necessarily a big problem because we can feel it, sand it and scribe it. Uh, I'm sure it does feel a little bit better now, but we could do with again a little bit of a sand so it's a lot of sort of like a little sand test fit sand test fit all right it may take a bit of time and i know this is live so it's a bit of a pain but with each little bit of a sand in i'm feeling this and actually that's not too bad it's getting quite good i mean just a little bit more all right I'm using a fine sanding stick. If I come in with a coarse one, we could potentially sand away, as I say, too much too quick. So if we sand this just right, it will save us a lot of work. I mean, we're still gonna have to put a bit of work into this to make it look right. Okay, now I've pushed that in. Oh, that's not too bad. So I'll push that in. I think that's as far as we want to go. I mean, it's normally when it sort of pops in and I'm just seeing it, feeling a step, but it's gone inwards now. Rather than it sort of bulging out, it's actually gone in. Right, so this is a tricky part because now what we need to do is very carefully, without scoring the plastic, try and just pop this up to the perfect height so we've got no steps right because really i mean i know we're gonna have to maybe do a little bit of filling and then a bit of scribing but if we have any steps right if it's bulging out we're gonna have to sand away at it a lot if it if it steps in we're gonna have to put a load of filler down right or we're gonna have like it look like it's sunk in Right, so I don't want to press too high, so I know if I press too high, it's going to pop back down, like it just did then. So you want to sort of take your time. I'm seeing like a little gap there, which I can just use to just try and pop it up. All right, and basically what we want to do is hopefully we can just pop it up enough so when we feel it, it's all nice and flush, which that feels probably as nice and flush as it's going to get. So leave that, right? Don't mess with it because if we, you know, push it down or pop it up, we'll have to readjust. And then what we're going to do is just not touch it and let our Tamiax Fin Cement get in, have it's that nice capillary action just to suck in between the join line and let the glue do the work. Right, so I'm just running around the edges, nice and carefully. Right, and then we want to be careful and leave that. Hopefully you could see now, that's not a bad fit. Right, um, now before we do any scribing around here or, or anything like that, um, that's going to probably have to, you know, be left for a couple of days actually because um, remember Tamiax Fin Cement what it does is Tamiax Fin Cement will melt the plastic and um, the two pieces of plastic come together and glue so basically this plastic is all 
soft now as it glues together and what i like to do is i like to sort of sand and scribe right on the join line i like to scribe right on the join line and make the join line where we've glued it look like a recessed panel line like the rest of the surface detail so it all blends in nicely like that um, but as i say it's all going to be soft right on the join line so we need to leave it for a good couple of days so probably next week we'll um, tackle that uh, and we also want to be careful and aware of this now because if we accidentally we're messing with something else and touch that it's going to press it in and then we're going to have a step to deal with which is more work more filling and all that kind of stuff um, i've already done this side right which is feeling you know not too bad at all so we'll leave that to dry for a little bit uh, I'm just going to check any questions you guys might have. Uh, I've got loads of people coming in here. Uh, people from New England, USA, South Carolina, Portugal, Belgium, uh, Dakota, Poland, oh, all over the place. Really, really nice. Uh, um, got a question here from Frank about photo etch, about priming it. And, and if so, what primer? Um, now, photo etch, it all depends on the photo etch you use. I know you do have the pre-printed photo etch, right? Which basically it's pre-printed. Um, so you paint your cockpit first and then you stick your, your um, photo etch on top of that. Um, you are probably obviously talking about the ones that aren't printed. Those ones, do you know what, just prime it like you would any other sort of plastic or any sort of modeling. I've had no problems doing that. Um, when it comes to primers, normally we're probably talking stuff like polyurethane type primers are normally good. So, um, for instance, we do have stuff like our surface primer by Vallejo. Um, as you can see, acrylic-based polyurethane. Um, that stuff's good. It just um, makes your paint stick better. It creates a good surface. Um, and it's just good at sticking to, to plastics and, and, and photo etch. Um, there's all sorts of other primers out there. AK do their own, uh, own version as well, um, which is a, a, a waterborne polymer, sort of like the same thing, basically. Um, Ammo does it. Um, those are good ones. I mean, really, you can also just get away with just getting any kind of acrylic paint and spraying that down, to be fair. Um, it just, you know, when you sort of get into sort of like the professional play of things, you know, it's just good to go off and have a proper sort of primer. Um, the only thing is about those paints, I will say, if you can buy the, the smaller pots, Right, because um, you know, here we have Vallejo, which is their big, I think it's like 200, yeah, it's the 200 mil ones. There's just, I don't know, there's just something about these paints when you start using them, and as soon as you've opened up, they do start to dry and sediment at the bottom, and, you know, they, they do kind of end up having a bit of a sell-by date, shall we say, on them, because you pour them into your colour cup, um and you start to get lots of bits in your color cup and they start spluttering out. it does it you know it does seem to go off a bit so it is i would recommend if you can go off and get like um i mean these ones aren't too bad these are what are these 100 mil or 75 mil no 65 mil sorry um you know it's just better to go in like smaller smaller doses so you don't waste so much because i have thrown like you know, half the pots of these away because they they do go off a bit sort of quick. Um, so just a nice little tip buying tip there. Um, looks like we've got another question. Um, tips on sanding into awkward places. Right. Um, okay, there is a few different ways. I mean, um, as you know, we've got sort of um, these type of sanding sticks. We've got the skinny sanding sticks just here. These skinny ones, they are good. We can get into 
um, a lot of sort of awkward places with them. Um, but I think you're probably meaning the really, really sort of awkward places. I mean, I know there's this little bit of detail that's just sticking out there and just trying to get in there can be sometimes a little bit awkward. Um, to be fair, a blade um, can be a good tool to sort of get into these little hard to reach places. I mean, if you're kind of light with it and you don't really sort of scrape at it, so you're just like scraping a load of plastic off, um, you can just enough scrape enough to to um, get it nice and seamless. Right? But you've got to be careful you don't go too far because remember, you know, this blade, it's flat. If we scrape too much, it'll turn it into a flat top, um, which is the whole reason why we have these spongy ones because it goes with the curvature um other things actually um i do have some other sanding sticks i did buy these years ago so i'm not sure how available they are now um there wasn't anything branded i don't think right um but if you kind of like look around online stores are normally good in their sanding section um you'll see these hopefully still um they're different grits and basically it's a nice pointy sanding stick um these i mean that they're, they're not good but um they're good for when you need them right because normally something like this you're really sort of getting into some really i don't know hard to reach corner or hard to reach place so i don't use them that often because it's normally something really really tricky um and it's like one little job um and it does the job nicely the only thing is um because it's like on this plastic sort of pencil thing the the nibs really do wear out really really quickly so i mean you could do a little bit of job like this and then basically worn out and you've got to throw them away uh, but as i say you don't use them very often but when you do use them they really do come in handy um it's just a shame they're not very durable but um good to get in those hard to reach places um so hopefully that helps feel free to get in some more questions right so with this model now um we do have this front bit just here um uh, do want to maybe quickly check my instructions um uh, painting guide or something one second i just want to see we've got this sort of clear plastic bit on here i think that is supposed is it supposed to be all grey or are we supposed to like mask that off? Because I was gonna show you how to do that, but I've just got to double check and make sure. I was actually looking at those photos then. I even the front okay, I'm probably gonna have to research that and we are live, so it's probably not a good idea. Um, I know it comes as a clear part, but just looking at the instructions, it looks like we're just painting that the same color as the rest of the model. Um, so we'll leave that bit. Maybe I'll research it in next week. Um, we'll look at it. I don't know if it's like some sort of camera or something like that. Um, but we shall see in the next week. So next up, all right, I wanna start focusing on canopies all right because um this model now i mean we're, we're basically almost at the getting close to finishing building all right because i mean i've shown you like sanding filling and stuff i'm going to finish off a few bit more filling bits um and then i mean we're pretty much good i mean okay according to the instructions we just got to like cut off pylons and landing gear which i normally sort of put separately um you know so it's basically finished apart from our canopies now canopies they are you know a bit of a different sort of ball game uh, first off cutting these off now although this is like a um sort of like a you know a polystyrene type plastic you know the ones that actually melt with um tamir extra thin 
cement um it, they do seem a little bit more brittle something to do with getting it clear they seem a little bit more brittle so when it actually comes to you know cutting these off of the sprue you've got to be careful because sometimes we can sort of cut and it sort of kind of fractures and cracks and those little fractures and cracks can sort of go right onto the clear part anything going on the clear part scratches cracks you know it kind of just messes it up um that is the the one thing with with canopies you've got to be careful about is you know as soon as you get cracks going into your canopy it's like that's it i mean there's there's no real coming back from that apart from like buying another kit or asking the manufacturer for another canopy or going down the vacuum foamed route or something like that so we want to be careful so if you can i wouldn't sort of recommend using your normal cutters um another one a good one to go off and do right is to to go down the razor saw route now we've got these cmkkits.com um these are good so they're basically it's basically photo etching there it's like a micro saw they are really really good um i brought this years ago um not massively expensive but definitely a good bit of kit to have so what we can do here because we're not going to be cutting into it right we're going to be sawing at it and if we're just very careful right remember that sort of stable hand right where you use these three fingers as like stability and what we can do is we can basically just saw this nice and cleanly off of the sprue i'm going to start holding the actual piece right because we don't want it to sort of move going nice and slowly right and this should come off really nice right you don't want to go fast there we go almost there going really slow and there we go that has been nicely cut off and it's just the safest way of doing it we just nice and safely get it cut off We've got no cracks now um if you've got a bit of money about yourself we do have the um the spear um cutters i'm not sure how you pronounce that it's um a foreign language i think um these things because they are all sort of like razor blades um the cutters are if we cut into this it just cuts these tabs off with no problem at all because they are so sharp they just cut off really nice and we can basically cut right up to the piece itself because normally i'd say you know leave a bit of the tab on the end but these are so sharp cut right up to it and then it's just a case of um you know your sort of preference you know the usual let's just cut away the tab that's left over you can use a blade and slowly slowly shave it off you could come in with a sanding stick all right the only thing is with a blade right just make sure you don't cut too deep and leave all sorts of marks and stuff i'm just going to sort out both sides all right going nice and slow I might just come in with a sanding stick a little bit on here, just lightly. There we go. As I say, I don't want to go too far. You might want to sort of, I don't know, quickly look at it, make sure you aren't going too far with it. But yeah, that looks quite good now. Um, so with this, we want to sort of kind of get this now ready to to mask it up i'm going to show you how to go about masking it uh, making your own masks rather than buying them just checking any questions um hi carlos from the democratic republic welcome um right then making your own canopy masks um good good uh, masking tape to use for this is good old tammy masking tape i know a lot of people have gone out there and they've tried to make their own sort of thing but i don't know tammy masking tape just seems to like nail it every time so 
um, definitely highly recommend these guys. Now, what I like to do, let's just get out a quick kitchen paper towel. It is, it is getting a little bit hot in the UK, all right? So for me, that means sweaty hands and fingers, which is definitely your enemy when it comes to um, doing these sort of your own sort of masking, all right? Because you lose all your tackiness. So I'm just giving that a clean, um, what I also like to do is when I get to this stage and I know I'm sort of going to be masking, I know I'm going to have to be use, um, cutting and cutting really, really nice. Um, this blade might still be good, but you know what? I want it absolutely brand spanking new, perfectly sharp. You really do, when it comes to cutting masking uh, tape, right? you really do notice the difference by going off and getting a brand new blade. All right, you really want that tip to be really nice and pointy. So I'm just getting some um, some pliers here just to pop this off. Never try and use your fingers because trust me, you will cut them eventually one day. All right, and use the pliers again to pop these on. Just trust me, it sounds getting blood all over your model. All right, put this in here. I normally throw these in Coke cans or something just to keep them nice and safe. Ah, excuse me. <clears throat> All right then, so first off, let's do uh, one of these. I like to sort of find what's the straightest edge. All right, so this is probably the straightest edge going down that way. Let's get off a bit of this masking tape. Hopefully this 10 mil is going to be big enough and i'll just send this down this most straightest point because you know we can basically let the masking tape do you know saves us cutting a look at this particular edge right because the masking tape itself can basically make this edge just here so i'm just making sure that's lined up then I'm going to press it down. I mean, feel free to maybe get out a cotton wool bud. All right, and just make sure it's pressed down because there's normally like a little raised lip going all the way around. All right, don't press too hard because we don't want to crack the canopy. Which, by the way, I mean, if you are a beginner and you're new to it, or maybe I'm a bit heavy handed. Right, bit of blue tack, stick it on the inside, and basically that blue tack will give it some strength for when you're like pressing down, trying to cut all this kind of stuff. Um, if you want to go down that route, but um, I've been doing this for a fair few years and I kind of know what pressure to put down, so I'm okay not using it, but feel free now at this stage. Now, ah, oh, this is the thing I'd normally either put this right up to the light. I mean, actually, you could probably, I'm looking at the camera now, you could sort of almost sort of see through it, uh, get to focus, you can almost sort of see through that masking tape, enough to sort of see the line, you could probably just see the outline of it. If you put it up to a light, I mean, maybe I could actually, let's, let's try playing a bit of cameraman and show you what I mean. Here we go. Here's a light right up here. Right. Hopefully we can focus. Can we focus, please? Okay. You might just be able to see that now. If you sort of look at it, because the light is like right here. Ah, there we go. Maybe. There you go. Because the light's right there, we can see that line. Um, it's like sort of cutting through tracing paper because of the light and it allows us to get that perfect cut all the way around. So putting it up to the light, like that's a good way of doing it, but I can't really do it while I'm on camera, sorry to say. Um, but another little thing is, is uh, to get something like, do you know your phone? I mean, my phone's actually filming this right now, so I can't use it, but you've got your, your, um, your camera flash on your phone. Uh, if you have the light on, you can just put your your actual piece over that light and 
um, that works just the same as well. Instead of like holding it up in the air to the light, you can sort of have your phone right here. Here's your um, piece and it's shining up. Um, and that's just another way of going about it. But I can sort of hopefully make this out enough to do it without a light, fingers crossed. Because I did sort of press it down with the cotton wool budge just enough to sort of see an outline right and hopefully you'll appreciate that coming along with a brand new sharp blade it just cuts perfectly through i mean you know the, the weight of the blade is almost doing all the work Right. And that is kind of crucial because if you're having to like press down and drag, if you haven't got a sharp blade, what can potentially happen is you start sort of like pulling up and creasing the actual masking tape. But if you can just slice through like a knife through butter and just lightly touch it, um, hopefully you can see that's just gone all the way around. It's quite nice and easy. Now, something like that, um, admittedly, you know, when you first start out, it's going to be a little bit sort of tricky. Your, your first ones might not be so good, but with practice, you can get there and, and sort of make some, some good of your own canopy mass, saves you a load of money. And personally, I do find it's just, personally, I kind of think it's better because you, you, you get good enough at it, you can always get a perfect fit i know these um, canopy masks that you buy um they're a pretty damn good fit but i don't know just i just feel like doing it yourself is better but that that is just personally me i know some people like to just buy their canopy masks um we are sort of running out of time for tonight but basically that is going to go on there um off camera i'll do the rest of the canopy masks um just want to finish off with what type of glues to use now for this front part i personally like to come along and use um, tamiya extreme cement um, i just glue the front one in um because that's absolutely fine because if anything goes wrong right you can always pop the big one off if you use like um uh, pva glue type stuff Problem is we're using stuff like Tamarax Fin Cement is if you sort of accidentally come along and you try and glue it in, if you touch, say, the canopy mask, that capillary action of the Tamarax Fin Cement could get under the canopy mask and leave an absolute mess. You touch any part of the clear part, it's going to haze up like mad and it is really, really hard. I mean, you've got to polish it so much to get that kind of stuff out. So... It is kind of a little bit on the risky side, but um, you know, once you get intermediate and advanced and more confident, I tend to just like to do this front part of the canopy with Tamiax Twin Cement. Um, then we have other products like um, um, Micro Crystal Clear, basically PVA glue, but it dries crystal clear as it basically says on the tin um, this stuff is good to um, if you are a beginner um, to actually go off and use this glue to glue down all of your canopy um, even if you're advanced i would still say and i would still go off and sort of use the micro crystal clear for the back part of the canopy right um, i do this because you get a better join with the Tamiya Extra Fin Cement, any sort of micro gaps get filled, whereas it doesn't with the Micro Crystal Clear. But I still like to have the option of, if you ever come to the end and you have to, when you sort of remove the canopy masks and you look inside and you see that, oh no, there's a hair in there, or you know, there's a fingerprint or a bit of dust is, is on the inside of the canopy. Um, if you've used just Tamiya Extra Fin Cement all over, Trust me, I've tried it before, breaking into there is going to mess up your canopy. If you've used Micro Crystal Clear, um, it's basically like PVA glue. You can very carefully sort of get a blade in there, right? And you just sort of very carefully kind of maybe a little bit of a cut all around and then you can just literally pop it off 
and then you can do whatever fixing, um, scrape off the glue, maybe add a little bit of paint where you've made some mistakes, and then you can glue it back on. So it's, it's sort of like a nice good safety net, the, the micro crystal clear. Um, but I'll do that all off camera. Hopefully that's explained that um, quite nice. Um, it is, I mean, for the amount you get it is kind of expensive. Um, I can't remember now, like five pounds-ish or something, give or take a couple of quid. Um, that is some micro crystal clear. Now, hopefully we'll be looking at some spraying next live session with this, which should be kind of on the cool side also because uh, we're going to be dealing with white paint. Let's get the camera around. It's sorted. We're going to be dealing with um, white. White's one of those things. It's like black. Um, because when it comes to pre-shading and post-shading, we normally add a bit of white to the paint to bleach something. Uh, we normally add black to do pre-shading or um, when it comes to post-shading, we'll add black. Um, so when we do stuff like black or white, we kind of have to go about things a bit differently because we could spray this white, right? Um, which is insignia white, which is what it's supposed to be on the underside. When it comes to bleaching, how can we bleach something that's already white? We can't add white to white. So it is a bit of a different process about going about it. So hopefully uh, you're going to look forward to that. Um, plus, let's face it, it's an aircraft carrier based aircraft. So we get to go Oops, mad with the weathering and I don't want to break my canopy. So I'll put that back down there. Um, apart from that, just checking out any last questions you guys might have. Um, whew, it's about 30 degrees C in South Carolina. Oh, that it does sound hot. It's only about 19 degrees C here. So um, you probably might need some of the old um, fluid retarder. Whenever it gets sort of hot, uh, uh, this stuff's good to add to paints, um, your airbrushing. Maybe just like a little drop or two of this in your colour cup. Um, I mean, you don't have to get this exact brand, but basically a water-based fluid retarder and it stops your paints from drying up so quickly. So when it's all hot, um, it doesn't dry up too quickly, dry up on your airbrush needle um, and all that horrible stuff. So uh, just a little tip there anyway. Uh, do I think primer? Um, yeah, I mean, pretty much when it comes to any paints, doesn't matter what it is, um, you want it to basically come out of that airbrush um, in a nice spray pattern, um, but without putting your PSI up. Um, when it comes to spraying, I mean, basically, if, I mean, you can spray anything through an airbrush, really. I mean, people spray sand through airbrushes and stuff, sandblasting, that kind of stuff. Um, you could put PVA glue through your airbrush. Um, there's fillers in here you could put through your airbrush. If you've got enough pressure, right, in your airbrush, you, you could not basically not thin anything down. You know, you've got enough pressure, you can buy pretty much anything out of it. Um, but that's not the point. Um, you want to thin your paints down so as, you know, you're not blasting it out so that the paint is dry before it reaches the model. So we basically, we thin everything down. Um, normally, when it comes to acrylics, keeping it under the 20 PSI rule is kind of like a golden rule. Um, you don't really want to be going any higher than 20 PSI, not all the time, um, but, but most of the time. Um, so keep it under 20 PSI. If you've got a spluttery spray pattern, when you sort of test spray before you start spraying, add some more thinners until you get a, just a nice, very feathered um, spray pattern coming out. Um, but not too much, right? that um, if you spray down and it's just you're getting no coverage um, then you put too much thinners in um, so yeah pretty much add thinners to pretty much everything although not ev absolutely everything i know we do have like lacquer base paint appear and natural metal finishes you don't have to uh, but pretty much most of the time you do so hopefully that answers that that's pretty much all the questions done um, next week I am kind of busy 
um, with going up Snowden. So next Friday, um, we won't have a live session because we're going to be getting ready for Snowden and everything. Um, hopefully, I'll do like a little sort of vlog of going up Snowden and stuff and um, letting everybody know, you know, what we finally met with the the, um, the donations. I think we're almost at 500 quid, so um, either way, it's going to be all good for, for um, Tourette's Action. Uh, I think it's Tourette's Action co.uk i do believe um so um should be should be good so hopefully you've enjoyed tonight hopefully i'll be seeing you in two weeks time um we do have a surprise coming along i mean should hopefully come in the post this week um probably have a video up for um probably actually the show actually the um, genesis models um show that should be um coming in the next week or two so um, hopefully you're going to be around for that and because i'm quite excited about it actually um but yeah until next time um hopefully you've enjoyed the live session here at genesis Models. so until next time my name is bobby waldron i'll catch you next time